So as uh, Nick explained, um, we're talking about Connect as our theme for the year. And uh, today we're specifically looking at connecting with God. Uh, next week we're going to be looking at connecting with like believers. Uh, so mostly each other, but other, other believers out there. Uh, then uh, we're actually skipping a couple weeks and more about that uh, later. Uh, there, then we're going to be talking about connecting with, you know, people who aren't believers yet. Um, the, the, the idea as we looked at this theme would just be a good idea to talk about how does all that work? And uh, Merv did a great job today even just talking about that, connecting with if God, you know, talking about the power of prayer, <clears throat> how that can make such a difference in our lives if we can rely on that, if we even pay attention to, to trying to do that. Uh, today, the, uh, the main scripture, which is going to be in your bulletin also, um, it's talking about uh, Jacob. So Old Testament now, you've got uh, you know, Abraham, and then he's going to have a son, Isaac, and then Isaac's going to have uh, twin sons, with Rebecca, uh, twin sons Esau and Jacob. So this is this is Jacob. Now, what you find out in the Old Testament that uh, names of people are very important. And so Jacob, um, he's he's a twin. He comes out after Esau, and he's grasping Esau's heel as as, as Esau comes in first, and he's grasping onto Esau's brother that's coming out. Um, so they name him that Jacob, and it means grasp the heel. But that's a euphemism for saying he's a deceiver. I mean, that's, that's something they, they would say. If you had somebody that's always out there, uh, uh, think of uh, your, your worst case of a, a car salesman who's just only out there to make a deal and, and, you know, this deceiver and all that, you would have named him, oh, he just grasping the heel. I mean, that's what the name means. So his name means deceiver. Uh, somebody who's, who's always out f for his own good and never about anybody else's good. And then Jacob started living that way. I mean, that was what his name was as an infant. But then you start looking through the Bible uh, in Genesis, you start looking at 24, 25, 26, 27, 20. You, you start looking at those chapters and you realize, okay, Jacob was living exactly that way. For instance, um, with his brother Esau, uh, one time, uh, Esau comes in, he's just famished. He'd been out, you know, hunting and stuff, and he comes in and he's famished. And he says, hey, Jacob, give me some of that stew. And Jacob says, well, yeah, I'll give you some stew, but first you sell me your birthright. See, Esau's the firstborn. He gets a double portion in the inheritance. And so Jacob's like, instead of feeding his hungry brother, he says, well, sell me your birthright, and then I'll give you this stew. Um, and that's what Esau says, well, you know, what good is the birthright? I'm, I'm, I'm starving to death here. i got to have some food. So he sells him the birthright, okay? Um, then later, when uh, it looks like Isaac's about ready to, to die, and, and actually he ends up living quite a bit longer yet, uh, but he's about ready to die, or so they think. And so Jacob and his mother, uh, Rebecca, you know, they, they decide, you know, oh, Let's go in there and let's, let's fool dad, you know, let's fool Isaac, and, and let's, let's get the blessing that's reserved for Esau. So, so Jacob, he's, he's already doing these kinds of things. So, so what happens then um, when that happens? He, he steals Esau's uh, birthright, and he, Esau's so angry that he's saying, you know, I'm going to kill him. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kill my brother. You know, he, he shouldn't be doing that, you know. Um, and so Jacob, he says something to his mom, and he's like, okay, Esau's out to kill me. And his mom says, well, go back to my country. Go back to where I came from and, and you know, find my relatives there. So Jacob flees. Now, here, there's something uh, incredible that happens while Jacob is fleeing, but I think there's some interesting things in there, too. While Jacob is fleeing now, he's fleeing for his life. He's going to go back to the country that his mom came from and try to find her people there. And when that happens, um, he, he f falls asleep, you know, out in the open. Uh, he's camping, you know, out in the open like that. And um, he has this dream. And I'm going to read you those, those verses. Uh, this comes from Genesis 28. Jacob left Beersheba 
and went toward Haran. He reached a certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set. He took one of the stones from the place, put it there at his head, and lay down in that place. And he dreamed. A stairway was set on the ground with its top reaching heaven, and God's angels were going up and down on it. Yahweh was standing there beside him saying, I am Yahweh, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your offspring the land that you are now sleeping on. Your offspring will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out toward the west, the east, the north, and the south. All the peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. Look, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he said, Surely Yahweh is in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid and said, What an awesome place this is. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early in the morning, Jacob took the stone that was near his head, set it up as a marker. He poured oil on top of it and named the place Bethel, which means house of God, though previously the city was, was named Luz. Then Jacob made a vow. If God will be with me and watch over me on this journey, if he provides me with food to eat and clothing to wear, and if I return safely to my father's house, then Yahweh will be my God. This stone that I have set up as a marker will be God's house, and I will give to you a tenth of all that you give me. Okay, let's just look a little bit about what's going on here. Jacob would have grown up hearing the story about how Isaac, his father, was almost sacrificed by, by Abraham. I mean, it, it, it goes something like this. You know, Jacob and Esau, you know, they're, they're having to do chores. And it was like, oh, man, I can't believe we have to do these chores. And then Isaac would say, you have no idea. I mean, let me tell you about the time my dad, he took me on a trip and he tied me up on an altar and he said that, the, you know, Yahweh, this great God, is going to provide the sacrifice. And he takes a knife and he almost kills me. And then the voice of God comes out and says, whoa, don't do that. There's a ram in a thicket. Kill that instead. I mean, Jacob had to have heard that story a thousand times growing up. He knew all about who Yahweh was. And now, get this, he's fleeing because of his because of the way he's treated his brother and he's been selfish to a fault and he's about ready to be killed, so now he's fleeing. And what happens? Yahweh, this great God, says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to be with you. This is the land. The spot he's on, this is the land for you. And what does Jacob do? He doesn't say, oh my word, I'm going to set my tent up here. I have found heaven. This is, this is the best thing that's ever. He doesn't do that at all. He says, well, if you do this, and if you do this, and if you do this, then I'll let you be my God. But I'm so scared right now, I'm still going to run away. In your bulletin, I have some fill in the blanks. This will be the first one. To have a relationship with Yahweh, you, want to, you have to want a relationship. Jacob was so caught up in his own self and his own flaws, and his own, it's all about me, me, me. He wasn't looking for a relationship with Yahweh. So when Yahweh comes up and says, here I am, have this relationship, he says, well, I'm not ready yet. I'm afraid for my life. I don't want to change. I don't want to be like what you want me to be. And if you really care about me, and you keep me through all my troubles and keep me safe, and if I do return, then I'll be your God. I mean, he wasn't looking for a relationship. And I think that's so important. As we're talking about connecting with God, if you're sitting there saying, I got no connection with God, guess whose fault that is? If you feel like you don't have much of a relationship with God, it's on you. Yahweh's standing there with his arms wide open, and he's saying, come, let's talk. Let's have a relationship. Think about your spouse, or think about your best friend. What is one of the things that has to happen in order to maintain a good relationship with a spouse, in order to have a best friend? You've got to spend time. You have to spend time with someone in order for the relationship to deepen, in order for the relationship to take hold. And if you're not spending time in your Bible, let's just pick that up. If you're not spending time in the Bible, or if you're not spending time in prayer, 
or if you're not spending time in journaling, if you're not spending time listening to what God has for you, how can you have a relationship then? And so one of the things I, I want to make sure we get across here on this first Sunday about connecting with God, if you want a relationship with God, you're going to get one. If you're not looking for it or you're not open to it, you're not going to get one. So in order to have that relationship, you've got to, in your mind, you've got to say, okay, I need that. And since I need that, I'm going to make sure I take the time to be open to that. I'm going to take the time so God can talk to me. I'm going to take the time so that the Holy Spirit can nudge me. And, and let, let's, whatever age you are, if that's not been part of your practice, it might take a little bit to get into practice where you're spending time with God. It's not going to happen overnight. But I guarantee you this, if you reach out to God and say, okay, you know what? I'm tired of running and I'm ready to be in your presence, and I'm ready to listen to your voice, and I'm ready to submit my will to yours, it will happen. Because I'm, Yahweh's standing there with his arms wide open, ready to embrace, ready to comfort, ready to walk with you. But if you're not willing to have that happen, then it's not going to happen. So as Laban runs away from Bethel, the house of God, the place where God has said, this is for you. When he runs away and he ends up going to uh, his, his mom's people, it's his, it's his mom's brother, Laban. And then, uh, and there, there's some beautiful parts in, in that story. Uh, Laban ends up saying, and like <clears throat> Jacob tells this whole story to Laban. Laban says, oh man, you're just like me. He says it like, you're a man after my own heart or whatever, you know. Why? Because Laban's built with the same kind of deceiving material. And he does the same thing to Jacob then. He deceives Jacob into marrying the wrong daughter first, and then he gets the other daughter. And then in back and forth between Jacob and Laban, deceiving each other this and that, and deceiving each other all the time. So basically, it's about 20 years that he's away from home. And, and during that whole time, he's got this uh, on and off uh, love-hate relationship going on with his father-in-law and what's going on there. And finally, he decides... I've already met the ceiling here. You know, my wages have been changed 10 times. You know, I, I, I can't get ahead. I'm going to take, and he's gotten rich, by the way, you know, and because and he always blessed him, see? And so he says, I'm going to take my flock and, and all my kids and my two wives and, 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 and my two concubines. I'm just going to leave. And so he steals away from Laban when Laban's not looking. You know, Laban's actually somewhere else and and, and Laban gets all mad, and in the process, uh, uh, Jacob's favorite wife, Rachel, she steals some household gods of, you know. I mean, there's a whole dysfunctional thing going on here where it's all deception, deception, deception. Okay, okay. On the way back home now, now Jacob's get, kind of go back, back home, but he's really worried. I mean, is Esau still mad at me? Is he still going to want to kill me? And so uh, he does some hiding behind his, his family and everything. He sends an emissary to find Esau. The emissary comes back. Yeah, I found Esau, and he's coming with 400 men. And Jacob's all scared, you know, and he's, he's thinking, oh, shoot, this is not going to be good. And so then he, he splits into two camps, uh, thinking, well, if Esau comes and wipes out one camp, at least I'm going to have some, because he splits his kids and his wives and concubines and different, you know. So if he comes and wipes out this, at least I've got this. You know, he's just, he's terrified about what's going to happen. And then he ends up coming uh, to this. I think it's already on the screen, I guess. During the night, Jacob got up, took his two wives, his two female slaves, and his 11 sons and crossed the, the, the fort of Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream along with all his possessions. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not defeat him, he struck Jacob's hip socket as they wrestled and dislocated his hip. Then he said to Jacob, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. Jacob, he replied. Your name will no longer be Jacob it will be Israel because you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. 
Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he answered, why do you ask my name? And he blessed him there. Jacob then named the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face and I have been delivered. Uh, Peniel, uh, the E-L means God, the other means face, you know, my, you know, so he's seen God's face. Uh, this is a story where it talks about wrestling with a man. Then it turns out, well, that's not really a man. It's either an angel of Yahweh or it's Yahweh himself, okay? Um, all right, as, as you look at that, he starts talking about changing his name. Um, again, the name of Jacob was about being a deceiver, uh, someone who you know, grasped, grasped the heel. When he names him Israel, the, the L, the E-L stands for God. And it's the idea that strives with God or prevails with God. There's, there's a whole lot of different kinds of meetings that can be there. But the idea is no longer are you going to be the deceiver now you're going to be this instead. And if you look at, here, the whole story about Jacob, up until this time, it's all about deception, 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 broken relationships, all kinds of terrible things happening. From then on, it's not Jacob that ever does the deceiving again. Matter of fact, when he's got two sons who deceive a whole village and kill all the men in the village, Jacob does not like that. He realizes that's the wrong attitude to have. And so he's mad with Simeon and Levi. Matter of fact, uh, at the end of his life when he's given Simeon and Levi, when he's given a blessing to all his sons, his 12 sons, Simeon and Levi get junk, okay, because that's the wrong way to live. The whole point is when Jacob encounters the real Yahweh, I mean, he had the dream and he ran away. When he finally returns and he's deciding, okay, I'm really going to be changed now, now he changes. And it's so important to realize that. Second, the only other fill in the blank is this one. Connect with Yahweh and you will be changed. What you need to realize is it's impossible to encounter the true king of the universe and stay the same. But you have to be open to that encounter. And when you can connect with God, then you can, you can be changed. One of the things I had to, you know, the, the meaning of names and how important it is, what do you call yourself? What do you think of when you think about yourself? Do you think of yourself as, oh man, I'm this deceiver? Or I'm this, I, I, I'm this person that hasn't cared for anybody in my whole life. I'm this selfish. I mean, if you think of yourself that way, it's hard to feel worthy. Instead of thinking about your flaws and naming yourself after your flaws, do this. What name does Yahweh call you? What does the God of the universe call you? And doesn't it sound like precious child? Because that's what you are to Yahweh, a precious child. If you can think of yourself in those terms, then it's different. When you think about connecting with Yahweh or connecting with Jesus, and in my mind, it's the same thing. When you can connect, then you can understand more about, okay, oh, Yahweh wants me to do this. Jesus wants me to act this way. We've got Jesus' whole life as a model about how to live. You've got the entire Bible about how to connect. And in the New Testament, there's a lot of good advice about, so live this way and further God's kingdom like this. You know, Jacob, he didn't have the same ways to connect with God that, that we have. He didn't have the scriptures to read every day. I don't think he understood that Yahweh could be with him all the time. He thought Yahweh was tied to a specific geographic place. I don't know that Jacob even knew how to pray or to journal, but there's many avenues that are available to us as we connect with Yahweh, to connect with Jesus. Uh, alone time when you're driving to work, Alone time for praying, for worshiping. Um, 
alone time when, before others get up at home. You can journal, you can pray, read your Bible, you can worship. There's a lot of different Bible apps that have Scripture. Some of them have devotional readings and Scripture. Just, there's so many ways to start that connecting kind of a thing. Uh, there's audio scriptures all over the place that, that you don't, if you don't have, if you don't read well or don't want to read, you, you can listen. There's so many different, different uh, Bible translations you can find, ones that speak to you. I, I know for me, I, I like reading the Bible through and I've been doing it for years and years and years. And I try to pick a different one every time. It, it doesn't have to be that way. For some of you, that maybe, maybe that's not your thing. But there's so many other ways to be able to get that piece of this is about God's kingdom. This is about Scripture. What does that mean to me? How can I live that out today? And then the next day, the same, you know, and here's another verse. There's, there's all kinds of things out there. And all those are just pieces to use to help you connect out there. And the other beautiful thing uh, is this, this verse from James. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. If you feel like, I just, I don't know, I, I just don't have it, ask for this wisdom. It's God's wisdom. Ask for it. That, that can help with decision making. That, that can, can help in, in trying to choose. All right, so how do I connect with God this week? But what, what am I going to do with that? It also helps even just to have an accountability partner. Someone that you can call up. Someone that you, that you give permission. Hey, you know what? Call me a couple times during the week and say, how's your time with God going? How's your spiritual life going? Pray with the person. Pray on the phone. Meet together for coffee. You can do anything you want. But the idea is you've got to pick some things to help you start making those connections. God's going to do the rest, but you have to make that first step to get it into your schedule. Because I'm sure most of us have these hectic schedules. There's no time to breathe or think or do anything. But that's not what life's about. Life is about paying attention to God's purpose for you, and then how do you live that out? Um, you've seen several of us have uh, shirts on. It's got the logo here. It's got the connect on the back. I'm sure you've seen that. I did that for the camera. Um, um, in Acts 1.8, that's our theme verse for the year. It's on here. It's not on the shirt pretty long. We have shirts for everybody here. I don't care if you're a visitor I don't care if this is your first time here. We've got a shirt for you out there. Uh, we've got shirts for other people that aren't here yet today. I mean, you, we, we just did that. There, these kinds of shirts, we've got all kinds of different sizes. If in three months we run out of some sizes or something like that, we'll order more. I mean, I don't think we're running out today. I mean, we were figuring that there could be more people here today. And then, you know, January 2, snow, ice, whatever we got plenty of shirts out there. Uh, we got a couple people that are going to be distributing them. If you're not staying for Sunday school, they'll be out there in the foyer. Uh, we want everybody to take a shirt. And the idea for that is wear it around. Um, it's, a, it's a conversation piece. Someone asks, what, what's this connect about? He's like, well, talking about connecting with God. Well, what's Acts 1.8? Well, let's look it up. Pull your phone out. You don't have to even have it memorized yet. It will be one of our memorization verses uh, in, in the weeks to come. The idea is it's a great way to advertise that you're a child of God. And that can open up conversations out there. So that helps connect not only among us, but to connect with people who don't go to church somewhere. And maybe that helps them. So we, we have shirts for you all out there. We want you to be able to do that. Um, I told Nick I wasn't going to say this. I'm going to anyway now. We, we have the, the 111... The 119.11 challenge, and that comes from Psalm 119.11. You can look it up. It talks about hiding God's Word in your heart, storing God's Word in your heart, or treasuring God's Word in your heart. Depends which translation you, you've got. But that's what the memorization is about. You know, every week, try to memorize the, the verse. Um, when that thing flips again, it's going to have the, the verse for, for, next, for next week. Uh, write it down if, if you don't have access any other way. Uh, when it flips over there and, and you see what verse it is, um, we want to do that together. It's, it's a way to, to grow and, and uh, just recognize what we're doing out there. Uh, on the table that where the shirts are at, there's also some stickers. Um, they, they work. They're clear stickers. It works best if it's, 
if it's stuck on something dark, so there's a dark tablecloth there. We got like four of them on there so you can see it. And then the ones you don't know what it is, that's the sticker. So don't peel it off the table, but take the other one and you can put it on your uh, window of your car what works or a dark car works or just anywhere where you got something dark behind it. It's going to work, work to see that. Just, just to help you remember the idea about connect and how well, we want to work at that throughout the entire year. Uh, at this point, I'm going to close the service with a prayer. Anybody that wants to come up for prayer, we'd be glad to pray for you. So please bow with me in prayer. Lord God, I want to thank you for who you are. I want to thank you for the story about Jacob and what it means to connect and how connecting with you can change us, that you can mold us. And Lord, I want to be willing for that. And I want people to, to recognize all of us have areas that we can grow in. And if we can connect with you, we, we, can, we can help get that to happen. I pray for your guidance, your wisdom. I pray for anyone out there who needs to recommit. I just pray that they can do that, that they can reach out and be prayed for by somebody today in, in that sense. And we just thank you for who you are. Bless and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.